We have been following a decline in academic testing scores here in the U.S. Yeah, but now a new report is finding that math and reading scores for children, specifically fourth graders, are now at the lowest level in decades. News Nation correspondent Marky Martin has more. According to a brand new report card from the National Assessment for Educational Progress, elementary test scores in math and reading have plummeted to a level not seen in 50 years. In the two years before and after the pandemic, math scores dropped seven points, marking a first ever decline. Reading scores dipped by five. It was very difficult. Um, both of my kids do so much better hands-on in the classroom. Julie Jordan is a mom of two who's not surprised by the report card. She watched her own children fall behind when COVID repeatedly took them in and out of the classroom. As a parent, we had to pick up the legwork and try to fill them in as much as we could, and it was still hard. And then you still had to deal with the teachers that were out because of their own kids with COVID. So it was just a really bad vicious cycle. The new data also revealing that many of the most vulnerable children fared the worst. Students of color, those who were economically disadvantaged, and students with learning disabilities saw their scores sink lowest. Some of our lower socioeconomic kiddos didn't come to school at all. Tracy Fisher is running for the Texas State Board of Education and has served on her local school board for a decade. She says the solution is to meet kids where they are, make school fun and normal again, and not to cram all the missed curriculum into one semester. Kids can't learn it faster. They're, they're not computers, they're children. So I think right now, if we want to move forward and help our kids learn, and quite frankly, keep our teachers, is we need to just give them time. Time is key. That was Marky Martin reporting. Joining me right now to talk about all of this is Paul Vallis, a former CEO of Chicago Public Schools and the former chief administrator, uh, administrative officer for Chicago State University. You're also running for mayor of Chicago. Good morning. Good morning. All right, uh, Paul, just education experts, they say students are currently underperforming at a level not seen in 20 years. Reading levels for fourth graders dropping below levels seen in 30 years. Can these students be recovered? Well, they can, but, but I don't anticipate the school districts are going to do what needs to be done to help them recover. You don't, you don't believe that they'll do what needs to be done to help them recover? No, no, absolutely not. You know, when, um, when I rebuilt the school district in New Orleans after Katrina, uh, we had had children who were out of school for the better part of uh, literally two years. And, uh, and yet we were able to come in and we were able to implement the type of reforms that actually... Uh, resulted in New Orleans leading the entire state in academic improvement for seven consecutive years. And we did it primarily by extending the school day and the school year. In other words, uh, we added about 35 percent more instructional time. Uh, we, ha we already have the shortest school day and the shortest school year of any country in the industrial world. Uh, and um, the only way that you make up for lost instructional time is by lengthening the school day and lengthening the school year. And it looks like Atlanta is one of the only school systems in the nation to actually extend the school day. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, these math scores, seeing the biggest drop since the tests began in 1973. Uh, moving on to this next question, the National Association of Superintendents says that there are numbers that are disappointing but not surprising. So, I mean, it's kind of sad that that's the statement, like, oh, well, we expected this to happen, but... What's going to, what is it going to take to have school districts actually respond in the way that you're discussing? Well, it's going to take leadership, and you're going to have to be prepared to do battle with the unions because the biggest impact, uh, the biggest impact in, has been in the large urban districts, so, uh, districts with overwhelmingly uh, poor children, overwhelmingly black and Latino children. In, the, in Chicago, I, I, the test scores, uh, preliminary results show that the test scores have been cut in half. But this is a district that effectively shut down their school campuses for 15 consecutive months, sub subjecting uh, children to, to just disastrous remote learning. And obviously, this is the most vulnerable population. Well, so and, and, and I know that the data includes the fact that there are researchers who compare what happened to the pandemic to what happened to children from the Great Depression and that there's this lifelong impact on them. Not just the fact that these test scores are so low, but their mental capability to receive information. Are you concerned about that at all from an emotional, psychological level? Look, I'm concerned about all those things, but what people are also ignoring is the dramatic increase in violence 
uh, um, um, violent crime uh, perpetrated against children and by children in Chicago during COVID. I think close to 140 children were murdered on the streets of Chicago. I think nine died from COVID, seven with pre-existing conditions. And, uh, and the percentage of, uh, there was a historic increase in crimes committed by school-age children last year, 8% of the arrests for murder and 8, 9% of arrests for shootings, 55% of the arrests for carjackings were school-age school age teenagers. So at the end of the day, I mean, it's not only had a catastrophic impact academically, but it's also had a catastrophic impact when you look at uh, the, the spike in, in uh, violent crime statistics. We need a miracle, is, is what it sounds like. We need a miracle. We need no. leadership, as you mentioned. What we need is to recognize that these schools are our schools, and, and, and we need to adopt a, a schedule and provide the type of interventions uh, that are provided elsewhere. We need a longer school day. We need a longer school year. We need to bring uh, these community-based programs, sports and recreational programs, work-study uh, programs uh, to our local school levels. Because right. in the city of Chicago, for example, they're spending $30,000 to kids. And they should not have a school calendar that's based on the farmers all in that. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.